It's been 15 years since the last Indiana Jones movie, and today we are discussing The Dial of Destiny, directed by James Mangold, not Steven Spielberg, and starring the old legend Harrison Ford. An artifact that can change the course of history is up for grabs in a race against a group of Nazis. So I've talked about the Indiana Jones movies a lot on my channel, and the same goes for most movie buffs out there, but... Of course, the original trilogy is great. I love all three movies. Personally, I've always liked Temple of Doom more than The Last Crusade, and I know that's an unpopular opinion, but I think Temple of Doom is definitely my second favorite, but uh, without a doubt, the first is my favorite movie of the franchise and one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time, Raiders of the Lost Ark. A lot of people do not like the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, and... I watched that movie for the first time a year ago, so I feel differently about that one compared to others because I saw it so late, and I really don't mind that movie. I don't think it's anywhere close to as good as the original trilogy, but it's not as bad as everyone says it is. As for Dial of Destiny, it was one of my top 10 most anticipated movies of the year, but I was very hesitant to have high expectations because I knew this movie wasn't going to be as good as the original trilogy, just like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. And and lo and behold, no surprise here, the Dial of Destiny is not anywhere close to as good as the first three movies. In fact, I would say I like it less than Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, in my personal opinion. And it seems like the general consensus right now is that this film is the fourth best in the franchise. I don't disagree. And maybe that's because I was exhausted when I saw this movie on Thursday night. But I'll tell you, I was pretty bored. And... For about an hour to an hour and a half of my viewing, I could not wait for this thing to end. Not that Dial of Destiny is necessarily terrible, but it feels like the franchise lost its spark in this film without Steven Spielberg's presence. And I'm a huge James Mangold fan. This guy has made some of the best movies of the last two decades. Easily one of the most underrated directors working today. The guy needs to get more blockbusters because he is so talented. He's made many great movies. Oddly enough, Dial of Destiny starts out feeling just like the previous entries in the franchise during this flashback sequence in which Harrison Ford's Indy is de-aged. And even though I was distracted by the de-aging, I could not get my mind off of his face during the sequence. I still love the sequence. It was so much fun. It was exhilarating. It had a lot of humor. The action was great. It looked fantastic. Everything about the first 20 minutes of The Dial of Destiny was exactly what I was hoping for out of the entire movie. But after that, the magic disappeared, and all I was left with was an old Harrison Ford and a slow-paced, boring adventure. And again, maybe I was just tired while watching The Dial of Destiny, but I sat there thinking, why is this movie so slow? Why isn't the action as exhilarating as I remember being in the first four movies? And James Mangold has a lot of talent. So I have reasons to believe that maybe he wasn't fully in charge of directing this movie. As we know, Disney has a long history in the last decade of taking over a director's movie and not letting them have as much freedom as they would prefer. My number one issue with the film, however, isn't the pacing or Harrison Ford's age or the movie's length. It's actually the overuse of the movie's CGI, which we saw in Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. For whatever reason, they forgot how to use practical effects, and people know that practical effects look a lot better when they're used over that of CGI. And some people argue this movie looks a lot better than Crystal Skull, but I don't agree. I think they look pretty much the same, especially during the action sequences. Maybe they start out using some practical effects in real sets, but especially towards the third act of Dial of Destiny, you can tell that they are not in a real environment. They are clearly in front of a green screen filming these action sequences in a studio. Now, I'm not sure why Spielberg did the same thing instead of filming in real locations like he did with the first three movies. It doesn't make any sense to me. Movies should always be filmed on location unless they don't have to. Like if you have, for instance, a scene inside, yeah, you can film those scenes inside a studio. But if you're outside during a scene, it always looks so much better and less noticeable 
when it comes to CGI when you film in a real location. So personally, I wasn't a fan of any of this movie's action outside of the opening sequences. In terms of performances, Ford was fine. I still like him as his character, even though he's aged. People, on the other hand, had a big problem with Phoebe Waller-Bridge's character. A lot are commenting on how they think she's annoying and they don't like the dynamic between her and Indy in the movie. I didn't mind her. She was just there. She did her job. I get people have problems with the actress outside of the movie. That's fine. And if I did more research on her, I probably would too. But I just don't care enough. Uh, the character is okay. It's just one of those forgettable characters in an Indiana Jones movie that is in the movie for a purpose, and you forget about them immediately after the movie is over. But Mads Mikkelsen was good as the movie's villain for what he had to work with, and spoiler alert, it wasn't much. The one thing I found odd about Mikkelsen's character in this movie was how you're wondering, why is this guy so obsessed with getting this dial? What does he want to do with it? What are his plans? What's his motivation? We don't find out any of this stuff until the very end, and I feel like it would have highly benefited his character had they given us answers probably in the middle of the movie. By doing this, it could have given Mickelson more to do and develop his character in depth. And that brings me right to the plot of the Dial of Destiny. It's not like any Indiana Jones movie has a mind-blowing plot. There is not a single movie here in the franchise that has this crazy plot that goes down as one of the best plots in movie history. But of course, every movie has some exciting stuff, great action scenes, great performances, a lot of good humor. The plot in Dial of Destiny is about as generic as you could possibly get. Think of the new action movies of the 21st century and how they're always typically the same thing. Well, just think of the most generic adventure movie of all time. The Dial of Destiny's plot is a replica of that. Of course, they throw in some Indiana Jones stuff that us fans all love, but is that really enough for me to call this a good movie? I've never once watched a Harrison Ford movie in my life and wanted to fall asleep. Until now. The Dial of Destiny is one of those films I just could not help myself but think, when is this movie going to end? Why is it over two hours and 30 minutes? There is no reason for that because the movie is also somewhat anticlimactic. You do have John Williams' score, you have Ford and Mickelson, plus an excellent intro and a few things that remind us all why we love this franchise so much. But I got so bored watching Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Maybe that has to do with Harrison Ford's age. The guy is nearly 80 years old and it was obvious they surrounded his stunts with CGI to disguise his age. I mean, I guess I'll give it a second shot before it leaves theaters, but as of right now, there isn't much here for me to enjoy. So I'm giving Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny a 5 out of 10. So what did you all think of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? Did you think it was worth the 15 year wait since Kingdom of the Crystal Skull? Do you think this is a better movie than that one? And if you're one of the crazy people, do you think this movie comes anywhere close to competing with the original trilogy of Steven Spielberg's? Let me know down below in the comment section. Anyway guys, now that I'm back from my long trip to Ireland, I have a few movies to catch up on, including Elemental, Extraction 2, and No Hard Feelings, so I'll have some reviews coming out for all of those, as well as a plethora of other videos this month in July. And of course, as always, if you're new to my channel, click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.